Welcome to the Exploring Unschooling podcast. I'm Pam Larickia, longtime unschooling mom and author. Join me and my wonderful guests for interviews, information, and inspiration about unschooling and living joyfully with your family. You can find the episode show notes, your free introductory ebook, What is Unschooling?, and lots more information at livingjoyfully.ca. And here's the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia, and this is episode number 51 of the podcast. It's the 21st of December, 2016, as I record this intro. In this episode, Luminara King and I chat about deschooling. Luminar is a former Steiner Waldorf teacher uh, turned unschooling mom, and we have a great chat about what that journey has looked like for her. She's also the author of Unschooling, Seven Steps to Beginning the Journey. We had a really fun conversation that touched on how becoming an unschooling parent is like training to be a Zen master, uh, Lego, embracing averageness, college, screen time, and what has surprised her most about unschooling so far. As a personal update, Rock and I had a great visit in New York City with Lissy and her boyfriend Jacob last week. Uh, my husband is a huge Chicago Blackhawks hockey fan, so we all went to see a game and had a great time, and that was actually the initial seed for the visit. Uh, we also checked out the holiday train show at the New York Botanical Gardens, and it was amazing. It was fun, too, to see how much Lizzie was looking forward to the drive to the Bronx from Brooklyn because she doesn't get much time traveling above ground in the city. We also went to their favorite diner, Wheelhouse, for dinner one night. It was great that Rocco got a chance to see their apartment in person, which Lizzie has done an amazing job decorating. She has a small tree up, and I had brought them each an ornament as a little thank you gift, and they looked great on the tree. And now we're home and getting back into our routines. And a big thank you to everyone supporting the show on Patreon. I deeply appreciate your support. I love that you're helping me share unschooling information and ideas with anyone who's curious to learn more and explore ways to live this wonderful lifestyle with their family. If you'd like to support the show, even for as little as a dollar a month, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash exploring unschooling. And for the quote this week, I'd like to highlight something Luminara said in our conversation. I think that, as parents, we have to be very careful because there is a ten real tendency to jump on any interest they have and just run away with it. I thought it was such a great point because even with unschooling, we can definitely get caught up in trying to push our children to excel. It's pretty easy to think that we're doing it for them, helping them to excel in whatever they've expressed an interest in. Yet when we dig into that more deeply as part of our own de-schooling, we often see that the motivation behind our enthusiasm is really more about us. Maybe it's a wish for them to appear conventionally successful, or maybe to prove to the naysayers in our lives that this unschooling thing works. But what it really does is interfere with our child's exploration of that interest. By suggesting, say, X and Y as goals within that interest, we're telling them what we think is valuable. And by implication, that their interest in the Z aspect isn't as worthy. It's always helpful to take a moment to check that our enthusiasm is about helping them where they are right now, not about projecting into the future. And now, on to the interview with Luminara. Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca, and today I'm here with Luminara King. Hi, Luminara. Hi, Pam. Hi. A quick introduction. I came across Luminara online a few months ago and have enjoyed uh, her unschooling perspective. And I wanted to chat with her and learn more about her journey and experience. She has a blog, a book about de-schooling, and a really fun intro video on her website. We'll learn more about all that as we chat. But to get started, can you share with us a bit about you and your family and how you came to unschooling? Yes, I can. Um, Yay! Well, well, <laughs> well, I'm a former Steiner teacher, Steiner Wardorf teacher. Um, and I was a fully paid up member, believing that was the only way to educate children. 
Um, and then I left due to be, becoming ill, actually, and we didn't go back. And then my daughter was in kindergarten, which she really enjoyed, actually. Um, and then she moved up to class one. Um, and she, I noticed that, which was more formal lessons, and I started to notice that she wasn't thriving, that she became very withdrawn, um, and she was very overwhelmed by it all. And so we took her out. And the idea was, as I was a qualified Stana teacher, that we would do Stana school at home. So I had a friend make the very beautiful Steiner chalkboard um, for our kitchen and um, I bought all the curriculum and we just kind of for a while did the days almost the same routine as if she was in school and after a few months she started to become sort of resistant resisting to sit down with me and just it just became such a struggle that I thought this just isn't working this you know and and then you just end up with in uh, arguing with each other and I thought this is just not a nice way to spend our day and so I let it go and the idea was to let it go just for a few months and then come back to it later but I started to find out about unschooling sort of online and through other people and through a friend and slowly little steps it sort of started to unravel my ideas around sort of education and um and just being with children actually and yeah and then it kind of was that was it we we never went we never (laughs) went back and the the the, the blackboard's still up (laughs) (laughs) but it hasn't been used in many years apart from what happens now is my daughter loves to do um, a chalk drawing on it for every season or every celebration. So that's it. But it's actually, yes, it ha- hasn't had any sort of formal educating things on it for a long time. I want to I remember that too. Yeah. I had a whiteboard that did that. I oh, yes. put it up at first, you know, and it was like, okay, you know, that I'll be able to show them things, you know, really easily. And, you know, a month later we were just all drawing on it. <laughs> That is really interesting. I love, uh, so was it really uh, a friend or something? Like, how did you first hear the term unschooling to know to even start looking at it? Yeah, it was a friend who'd been unschooled. I mean, she was amazing. She was amazing. And Mm -hmm. actually, there was some, you know, I I couldn't do this without um, having the support that I had at the beginning. And that's kind of why um, I decided to do the blog and the and the book, actually, because the people were absolutely amazing. And you do need that. You do need someone to, to hold your hand, I think, because it's quite scary sometimes. And, um, yeah, I had a friend and, I, you know, I would uh, she was unschooling her two daughters. And, yeah, she was just on the end of the phone. So as um, I was saying, you know, this isn't working and that's not working, you know, my daughter doesn't want to come and sit and do things. And she was saying, oh, I've, you know, I've been through that and and kind of just said, have you heard about unschooling? And um, and so then, yeah, just looking it up online, really, and, and mm. just finding, you know, lots of things about it there. And, you know, it's quite quite difficult to let that go. And that's why it is important to have those people because you have a lot of questions come up. Um, and it's so lovely to be able to have someone on the end of the telephone or, you know, if you can meet for a cup of tea and kind of share these concerns and worries. And if they've been there before, it's just wonderful to have that reassurance that actually it, it will be okay, you know, if you, if, if you don't force mm. the children to sit down and do a curriculum. I know that is that is huge because um, just finding some place like I know for me it was online um, because I didn't know anyone in my uh, geographical area but you know because if you ask those questions of of the other people in in my life I would have gotten very different answers not the kind of answers I was looking for right so finding a place where um, you can ask those questions or even just express those concerns 
with people who have, you know, the same goals that you're you're trying to to reach, right? So that you're going to get answers with from that mindset, from that perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you have written a book called Unschooling, Seven Steps to Beginning the Journey, and you have a great chapter about learning. And I really love how you describe becoming an unschooling parent as training to be a Zen master. <laughs> you wrote, yeah, you wrote, um, you learn the delicate art of allowing and following the flow of your child's learning, knowing when to offer up ideas and when to step back. That stepping back piece can be hard, like you were talking about a bit earlier, to figure out as you move to unschooling, can't it? Yes, I think it is one. I think it has to be the hardest. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, it is. It is. I really do feel it is like being a Zen master. And um, you have to feel, you just have to sense it, you know. And, And it's something that you... You, you can't ask anyone else, you know, you can get support from other people, but, you know, you have to have, I think what it comes down to again is, is this idea, and I'm, I'm sure you agree, and I, I, know, I'm, I know many unschooling families um, agree with this, is that unschooling actually is about relationship, and so about the relationships we build with our children, and um, that that becomes something very special and unique. And in the, it's in those relationships that we can sense, you know, what our children's needs and interests are, and when they need our help and our guidance, and when they need to be left alone. And it's it's the, it's quite hard to explain that to other people that aren't in the same situation, and the, because they follow a more sort of maybe structured way of learning. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so for me, it's, it is almost like being, you know, a Zen master or, you know, even a shaman or medicine woman or where you're actually, you know, it's more to do with your sense of things. Does that make sense? Am I making? Yeah, no. And you're right. It's so hard to put into words, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's such a feeling, it's such a feeling rather than anything that comes from the mind or, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think your point your point is well taken that it's so much to do with the relationship, right? Because it's so much about um, deeply understanding our children in that, you know, you can get a sense at that point, um, what it is, like what the motivation is behind their actions, as in, you know, that's where you can start to sense if they're looking around for some more input, for some more help, for some more support, or whether they're really focused on figuring this thing out for themselves. And, you know, even just you maybe physically being nearby for moral support rather than actual, you know, learning support, you know, and you, you start to learn to tell the difference. Um, And you're not always going to get it right. But you know, with that connected relationship, they'll be able to say, you know, no, not right now. I don't, I don't need that help. I don't want that help right now. You know, because you've um, created that, that connection and that trust. I think, I think that's the, the relationship and, and the trust you develop over time. Um, Just seeing unschooling, seeing people, human beings in action that you know that there may be moments when they just want to do it themselves and, and to be left alone and, and knowing that that's okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. Yes, I, 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 I agree. I do agree. And, you know, I think there's an element, especially when you first come to unschooling, of having to sort of unravel our beliefs and mm-hmm. around education and how children learn. Um, you know, a, a wonderful book that I always, if anybody, you know, asks me about what we do or, you know, the interest in schooling, um, I say to them, you know, read um, uh, Peter Gray's book, uh, Free, it's Free to Learn, mm-hmm. isn't it? That's that's right. Yeah. I think that's the title. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it. it well, he says it all there, that this idea that um, children really don't need our interference yeah we can be there as you said to um be facilitators you know if they if they want help um 
and I, you know, I I do suggest things. I do. I know what they. I know yeah. what they. I know what their interests are. I know what they like. And you know, if if there's um something on in the theatre or there's an exhibition on in, the, in a museum, and I say, would you you know, would you like to go to this or you know, so that you know, that's kind of I see my role really. And you know, if they if they come to you and say, you know, I I, I really uh, well, good example is actually, um, and I know she won't mind me sharing this, but my daughter's saying. You know, I think I might quite like to take singing lessons. Is that a possibility? Could could we find someone? And said, yeah, I could. We can have a look. What we can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. And that's always the thing you worry about, right? When you're talking about um, uh, keeping keeping a bit of a distance or stepping back, is is you don't want to leave the impression that it's you know hands off. Leave them to fend for themselves. Because <laughs> I mean, you're right. You're you you want. Um, you're trying to help them have um, enjoyable days, right? So if you see things out in the world that you think they might find interesting or fascinating or just a passing tidbit, yeah, you're going to share that that stuff with them because um, you're you're filling up their world with them, right? Yeah, and I, and I also think that it's it's what how they how they see you as well, like you being. Um, uh, you you know the int uh, you know I I love learning and all day, I have so mm -hmm. many interests and um, and I get very excited about them I'm passionate about many many things art and writing and music and you know uh, whippets I love whippets and um, <laughs> and, and and they you know they see that they see that joy that I have of um, being out and learning about the world and and um, and you know that. Then they're not always interested in what I'm interested in, but they they do they do see you know um, yeah. how I find the resources yeah and they you know the, and that you know the world is it can be a very exciting and fascinating place. Yeah, it's not about um, them necessarily enjoying everything that you enjoy, but it's about seeing you explore the world, right? I that's one thing I I often um, like to to share because it's not that we've decided you know, or it's less helpful if we decide we want our children to have a, a different sort of life, right? And and we're raising them this different way um, for, for certain reasons. It's about us as parents also living that life that we want for them. You know, this is what we're imagining as adults. They'll, you know, still be curious. They'll still be feeling creative. You know, they will wholeheartedly like throw themselves into whatever they're interested in. And we want that for ourselves too, because also not only is it a really fun way to live, it shows mm -hmm. them that it isn't just for kids. This isn't like a kid's thing that you're doing. This is a way to approach your days, no matter what your age is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that thing of, um, uh, I, I wrote, oh, I should I should know her name of her a blog, uh, and I apologise to her if she listens to this and I haven't got it. <laughs> oh no, I feel really bad. But um, I'll put it in the show notes. Okay, um, okay. A, wonderful, a wonderful blog that I read very short was about how um, unschooling. So it's not that that not going to school leaves a deficit in the day, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're not. We're not doing unschooling as an alternative to school. As you said, this is just mm -hmm. a way of life. It's a way of living, um, not just when you're a child, but as you said, when you, you know, when you're growing up, when you're an adult. Um, yeah, it's 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 just, yeah, a way of life. Yeah, I love that. It's not a deficit. <laughs> it's yeah, not about what you're taking it was, out. It's, it's what yeah. you're filling it up with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, you also have a fun intro that I mentioned uh, to unschooling on your video on your website. And in it, you mentioned how Lego was a catalyst in your journey to unschooling. I was uh, hoping you could share that story a little bit. Yes, I can. Yeah. Oh, I do love Lego. Um, <laughs> well, there, here, this is a perfect example of having support and someone to talk to and share with at the beginning of your journey. And um, as a Steiner teacher, um, you know, there, you basically there was no plastic, um, I, and like I said, I really believed in, in in the whole philosophy, and and there are some beautiful parts to it. But one of the things was that the children, children, especially young children, don't have any plastic toys or bright coloured toys or noisy toys, 
Um, and we had lots of wooden um, uh, wooden to- toys. And uh, my son is is very different when he was born. He's <laughs> And I think I, I do think that he was a real catalyst for for um, us discovering unschooling as well because he just wouldn't behave as a, <laughs> as, a as he wouldn't fit in my mould as a perfect Steiner child and and um, I would buy him these wooden toys and my husband said you know you're buying those for yourself don't you not for him <laughs> and I go no no it's for him. Um, because he just, from the beginning, loved um, mechanical things. Um, he liked bright colors. He liked, uh, you know, um, machinery and technology. And this was when he was two. And um, <laughs> I remember ringing um, a friend, her home homeschooling and unschooling friend, and 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 she had uh, four boys. And I said to her, you know, help. Um, you know, my son is climbing the walls. I just don't know what to do, you know. And um, she said, look, lovely, you you need to go and get Lego. And I <laughs> said, what? And she, I said, but isn't that, you know, it's all plastic. She goes, no, trust me, I, I really would suggest you would go and get Lego. And so that very afternoon we drove to the, the supermarket and bought the biggest tub of Lego that we could find and bought it home and oh wow he that was it that, that was and and still to this day he has um a, a great love of lego and 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 the creativity is just astounding and the idea that i would have not allowed that in that in his life if if i had continued to hold on to this quite rigid idea um about not allowing um certain toys and technologies into their lives, my children's lives, um, you know, is it would be quite sad because yeah, he's he is amazing what he builds. It's really, really um, you know, impressive and you can see that he gets so much pleasure from it. Yeah, I get goosebumps just listening because I can just imagine, you know, him just diving in, right? That's uh, yeah. it's yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a beautiful moment actually. Yeah, great. I can imagine. Wow, I love the blog post that you have about embracing averageness because I think there's such a valuable shift in there that can help us parents um, shed our expectations that we might not even realize we're still caring about who our children should become in the future because that really interferes with how we see them today, doesn't it? Yes, I, I. That is so true. Um, I think that we have to be really aware of the, you know, putting pressure on our children, especially when we're doing something different um, than than mainstream school, and we're doing unschooling or even traditional homeschooling. Um, that we kind of, as parents, we get sometimes. This people are standing on the sidelines waiting for us to fail, waiting for our children to fail, so they can point the finger and say, "Told you that was a crazy idea." Um, and yeah, so I think it's something to be really aware of because I, you know, that I see it. I see it online a lot. You know, um, I mean, it's wonderful that that um, you know children are doing TED talks at the age of nine, and you know, it's great. But you know, and, or that you know, they might end up, <clears throat> you know, being in Stanford or in Cambridge and um, universities, and you know, it's wonderful. But not all children are going to be like that, and and that that's okay. You know, that's that's something I've really struggled with over the years um and something to, to to kind of let go of i mean what if you know i have you know i've asked myself questions what if my son just wants to be a postman you know <laughs> you, know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know or mailman in in the u.s you know yes yeah. um, <laughs> so i have to <laughs> some nice about that and um you know and and you know what so and so what if our daughter just wants to get married and have children and be a homemaker you know you know how how does that feel you know and um it, you know it's it's quite a journey and it, and it's okay it's it's um you know it's it's something again i feel it's another layer of the disc- of deschooling because i i think that comes 
from, again, the pressure of that the children feel in school um, to like, oh, you know, what is success? Success is, is, you know, is it linked to money or is it linked to happiness? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that is such an awesome point because, yeah, if you think it, it and it is our work again, and I think it's a big part of de-schooling, you know, as you're getting used to the idea of um, not of, of, of just investigating what expectations. And as you said, I think it, they're tied up with what our idea of success is. And when you're worried that, you know, when you've got people in your lives and you feel like they're kind of extra watching you extra hard because you're doing something that's less conventional. And so you're feeling the pressure, you know, to show them that, see, look, this worked. But then you get caught up again in looking at conventional measures of success, right? Like, um, and, and then you think about those kids who who do those things, but but and then all part of your deschooling, you realize, well, they those are things that are important to them, um, that but they weren't because. I mean, I don't know them personally, but knowing uh, them having come from an unschooling kind of environment that they weren't likely pressured to do those things because they look good. It was just something that they personally found interesting. Yeah. Right. So that's where you get to the point where, you know what, whatever it is that that my children personally find interesting, that's you know, what we're going for. Yeah. And it's, it is asking yourself, what if what they find interesting is, you know, something that would just be, you know, conventionally very mainstream. But again, we know they're choosing it from a different place because they're choosing it because it's interesting and important to them, not from, you know, they won't see it as like a failure you know what I mean yeah. um from, from like a conventional person looking in would say oh yeah but you're only a postal delivery person or whatever <laughs> whereas they're like yay you know I'm doing this something that I enjoy um you know and maybe maybe what they're enjoying is um you know, more defined time for work, that they're not bringing home pressure, they're getting money um, to do other things that they enjoy, you know, for whatever their reasons, they're at least making, they're making choices in their lives that make real sense to them, not making choices because of um, other expectations around them that they feel pressure to meet. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> it does, it does. And I, and I think, you know, as parents, we have to be, you know, very careful because there's a real tendency to, to, to jump on any interest that they have oh, and, and, yeah. and run away with it. So, 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 you know, so for example, you know, my daughter's just said, oh, you know, I, 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 I know, and I do have to hold myself back because I think it's, it's part of my personality as well to get very excited about things and, mm -hmm. and. You know, and, and it's kind of how I work with myself. But, you know, I have to be really respectful as well of how my daughter's personality is and how my son's personality is. And and in my daughter, so, you know, I said earlier that she's shown an interest in singing and I've always thought she had a very beautiful voice. And um, I have always tried to encourage her, but she sort of said, no, no, no. And I, you know, and now when she said that, I noticed a um, there's a difference to my attitude now to than, than it would have been a couple of years ago, a few years ago, saying where I would have gone, oh yes, and then and then you could sing and then you could do um YouTube videos and and, and yeah. then into competitions and then you could go to the um uh, Royal School of Music and then you might be a great and you know and and she's just looking going, What? I I, I just said <laughs> I just wanted to have some singing lessons, like no pressure on men, hey, you know, and, and, um, yeah, and, you know, that, that, you know, that is part, I'm sure that, kind of, you know, that comes from, that is part of kind of my personality as well. I have to, be, you know, to be honest about that, that's kind of, I get very excited about things and, but, but also I'd say that, 
um, it did used to also come from a, a place of fear, you know, and, and, and as you're saying, the, the idea that, oh, because then, you see, and then you'll be mm -hmm. a success. And then you can say to those people, you know, that, see, you know, it, um, unschooling, it wasn't a radical hippie, you know, wishy-washy yeah. idea. <laughs> she's, she's now in the Royal Opera House singing, you know, <laughs> and, you know. But it's the poor kids, uh, you know, like um, the ones being subjected to their parents' fears, really. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Because when we start, you know, kind of planning it out, then we, <laughs> we take it out of their hands, right? All of a sudden, there's not really choices and they feel more obligation, yeah. you know to uh, to try and follow through for you rather than for them. And then when, you know, when she's, you know, choosing whether to continue with lessons or maybe wanting to change teachers or whatever, they first filter it through our expectations rather than just being able to consider their own needs, right? Yeah. I think it, it makes their choices so much harder because there's more crap in there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and they, they often, they, they don't want to do it. They'll often and walk away because you know mm -hmm. you know who would want to do that I mean if you know if I <clears throat> you know if I if I said to my husband oh you know I, I you know I wouldn't mind taking up horse riding he said oh yes I think you should and then you could do dressage and then you could do competitions <laughs> and then you could travel oh and then you could win it and you go well I just don't want to do it now because you know yeah. you've got so much pressure you've taken all the joy of 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 you know that exploring that for myself um, and I'm going to continuously feel this pressure as though you've planned this out for me I mean no wonder they would just walk away from things yeah because it just plops um, really high level goals on top of something that you're just <laughs> exploring to see if you like it or not yeah yeah um, you mentioned uh, on your on your website that you have a college degree so I was wondering if you could share your perspective on college nowadays <clears throat> Uh, yeah, college is an interesting one that keeps shifting for me. I I don't have a black and white answer to it, but um, yeah, I was thinking about. I always say to people about um, you know Ken Robinson in his mm -hmm. TED talk, and I'm not sure if it's in in his do skills. Uh, sorry, do schools kill creativity? I'm not sure if it's in that one or one of his others. But he talks about um, if you are going to go to college. Um, about maybe going later after you've had some experience of the world. Um, and I think that's great advice. And, you know, I, I, I don't know how it is in the US, but here in the UK, um, the government has put the fees up quite high for students again. So, you know, it's becoming really, really expensive to go to college. And one of the um, ideas that came to me well, I was actually working myself recently because I'm um, an artist as well. And I was working with a printmaker um, in his studio. And, oh, it's, he's, he's an amazing man. And he's been doing printmaking for many, many years. And he had this wonderful studio with fantastic press. And, and there was only um, seven of us. So he had lots of time to dedicate to each of us, helping us with the, the processes and talking about the history of printmaking and, and just being able to talk to him. And I thought when I left, I thought to myself, you know, do you, you know, is it really worth spending 9,000 pounds on a degree? Um, I think that's a year as well. I could be wrong. It's been a long time <laughs> since I went. Um, uh, or imagine how much money, how much, how much that money, you know, could be used, um, to be in contact with professional people like this. And would there be more value in that? Because this person is actually working right now in, in the field that you're interested in. So, you know, and having access, access to actually a professional studio um, that it has great equipment in it. Um, so I, I kind of, that, that was a turning point for me. And that just happened a few weeks ago. <clears throat> um, and I, you know, I, I kind of, we are encouraging our, both our children to, to think, um, in a way that is more, you know, to be entrepreneurs really, and sort of saying, you know, um, 
you don't you don't have to work for someone you can work for yourself um mm -hmm. but i i never thought of that in that way saying all this money that we you know that we can spend could it could it be spent yeah going around fight and almost becoming an apprentice to some people that have been in the industry that you're interested in for you know for a long time yeah and depending on you know what your interest is you know even buying you know almost giving yourself permission to instead spend that money on on supplies and stuff so that you can actually you know get high quality whether it be paint or you know clay or you know kilns and potter's wheels and and that kind of stuff and saying you know I'm going to spend a lot of time myself plus you know find it is easier nowadays you know with the internet to find other people um, sure. who are practicing um, these arts whether it's you know physical arts to writing to whatever you know and to invest in your own personal development rather than investing through a college program yeah 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 and you know and I think and I do say to both our children look it, you know if you want to go to college that you know that's fine and uh, but mm -hmm. what I say is to go you know may when you go, if you want to go, go because you really want to do something. So, so I kind of thinking, you know, if I ever went back to do a master's in art, then I would choose the college um, that could give me the best experience possible, that could give me all the equipment I needed, the access to professionals. Um, and, you know, I'd really make, and in a way, if you went to, you know, a citizen, if you go to a college interview, you interview the college, don't let them interview you. <laughs> you say, yeah. Hey, you know, you've got to change this around. Hey, I'm investing a lot of money here, you know, and I want to know what you're going to give me for, for, for that money. And it has to be, you know, really good for me to do this. <laughs> Otherwise, especially as you said, because, you know, in a way, it's great. There's this competition out there because of the web of, um, com you know, competition with, with colleges is that you could say, because, hey, you know, if, if I don't feel like you can give me a, a, the great experience that I want, I'll spend my money elsewhere. You know, um, as you said, buying professional materials and finding online courses, maybe, and, you know, doing it that way instead. That's a great point there because, you know, that's what I was thinking. It's college is just another choice on on the learning platter, right? When you're talking about interviewing colleges, you know, going with that mindset because you're, you know, to, to approach it from there's something I want to learn more about. Here's all the different ways I might do that. College being one of those options, you know, and investigating further and figuring out which path you want to try. I mean, even even going to college doesn't there doesn't mean that you have to stay and finish. You know, if you think it's going to be a great place and you go and you check it out for a year and it's not what you were expecting again, then, you know, it's OK to to leave or not go back because it's like, oh, you know what? There's an I want to try another way to learn because that didn't that didn't meet uh, the goals that I had for the experience or whatever, but yeah, to think of it more as, as, as an option, as, as a, certainly a valid choice, if it's, um, going to help you meet whatever goals that you're, or interests that you're trying to pursue. Right. Yeah. 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 And I know we, um, I think I've mentioned on the podcast before when we were talking to family, when Lissy, um, got her art artist visa, to go to New York City um, for yeah. photography because she had been looking at college programs as well. So we kind of said, you know what, the money we're investing for, um, you know, the the artist visa application, we said, you know, think of it like like money for college, except she's going down to New York City to, you know, um, meet and network and learn about uh, learn more about photography um, that way. But we, we tried to make the equivalency to college just to help them kind of understand that, you know, she's not just going off to play or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she is, but. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, because yeah. learning is so playful and enjoyable. But you know, just that that helps sometimes um, for them to make the connection that that this was uh, an investment. You know, that it was that it was worth it. Uh, another hot topic I wanted to talk to you about. Um, it's definitely a hot topic around unschooling is, quote, screen time. And oh. I, I put that in air quotes. You didn't see my hands because I know we don't have video. <laughs> because I think the phrase itself can be part of the problem because it lumps together so many different activities. And part of de-schooling, as we've talked about quite a bit on the podcast, is teasing all that out. So I was wondering, what has your experience been on the topic? Oh, yeah, screen time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well as you can imagine it, it, you know from in, my views from when that when I was a, a Steiner teacher which was you know technology is bad has completely changed <laughs> and now I'd say I was quite an advocate for technology and um and it's very interesting because now I'm on the other side of it so when I was a Steiner teacher you know I'd be kind of with other parents saying, yes, technology is really bad. You have to be really careful. It does all this damage. And now I flipped over to going, oh, technology is fantastic. You should stop me. <laughs> you know, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite a flip. Um, and, you know, yeah, I've given so much thought to this. And one of my feelings is that, you know, there is a lot of, I sense like a lot of fear um, around um, technology, not in the unschooling world, um, but, you know, outside of that. And I think, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think as, I think as unschoolers, um, all of us are actually, and now a friend put it really lovely, like, um, trailblazers. That's the right word, isn't it? You know, and, <clears throat> and we're going off and it's, it's quite progressive. And so, for, but for some people, they find that, quite difficult you know um <laughs> who are you know not in schooling and and I always think well I've just noticed so much kind of <clears throat> distrust as well of children and the way that they use screen time and I, I always think about and I, I, this is the story I always tell people I say well you know and it could be a completely wrong story and it's a myth but I read it somewhere so I'm gonna be <laughs> It's on the internet, hey, so you know <laughs> must be <true. laughs> I like it. And so apparently the the first you might know this, the first steam trains that came along, um, people were terrified of them and and they didn't want to ride on them because they thought that if you went that far they went that fast, that they would faint or even die. Um so it, I always think of it like that, that the older generation, not all of us obviously, but um is quite fearful of the of the progressiveness of the new generation. So, you know, um, and it, it has been through in music as well, hasn't it? You know, sort of even to us mm -hmm. now, it seems bizarre that <clears throat> Elvis Presley's music would have been thought as as radical and progressive, but by the older generation, it was at the time. And I kind of see technology in that way, and um, so that that's all kind of. Yeah, the screen time thing. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts on it? I just, just I quite like to know. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I pass that back to you, Pam. I just, like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you? <laughs> what do I think? Well, okay, I'm going to add a story because you were talking about, you know, fear of techno technological developments. I, I seem to, and it's another one that I haven't verified, but I'm pretty sure it was through conversations um, maybe on Sandra Dot's website or, or in lists, et cetera. Um, the, the fear that came around when, when the printing press, when, uh, you know, access, wide public access to books came around because, you know, people really feared that 
you know, people's minds would turn to mush because they wouldn't have to remember all these things, right? That they would be able to read them in books. They wouldn't have to, you know, tell stories. There wouldn't need to be all the these oral gatherings and stuff like that. Um, so there was real fear. And, you know, sometimes it's useful to do that because at this point, you know, we're in more of a book worship kind of society, right? Where if you read books, that's awesome. And and now screens are taking away. People aren't reading books anymore, you know. So it, it helps to just throw out some examples of of fear that just comes because of change. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think that's a huge piece of screen time because, I mean, this technology is really new, isn't it? I mean... I was in high school, you know, when computers first just started that, that you could, you know, get something at home, you know, to work on. Um, and we did because my dad was in the computer field. Um, so we had them reasonably early in their life cycle. So maybe that helped me get used to it, too. But I think that's that's the huge piece, you know, as because again, as I was saying, if you call it screen time, you kind of you kind of stop. He's like, oh, they're looking at a screen, whether it be a phone or a TV show or a game or, you know, there's just so many things that you can be doing. It's a for me, they're they're tools. They're not like a one activity. Oh, he's on his screens. It's all the different it's taking that next step to see what they're using it for what what tool is you know is it entertainment which is a perfectly valid use too but you know i do most of my most of my business on it i write on it i research um you know it helps us get around like when we were driving around at the karate tournament you know we had google maps out helping us avoid some closures and you know it's it is a useful tool. And when you see your kids and you start to, you remember earlier on, we were talking about that close relationship and that connection that you build, you start to learn, you learn more about them when you take the time to see what they're using that tool for, right? What their interest is, what they're learning through it. And, and it's another way to connect with them. And to, I remember, um, when we first started, you know, I had all those conventional ideas about like at that time, there weren't cell phones. It was video games, console video games, well, and some handhelds, but the really new ones. And I just, I just said, you know what, I had this community of unschoolers who were telling me that, you know what, it's not so bad. And I'm like, hey, you know, they haven't steered me wrong yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take the time and look. So that's what I did. I said, you know what, I, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm going to sit and hang out and watch. And you know what, I, I was even careful not to really say much or talk much because I knew um, Joseph already had a feel that I was uncomfortable, you know, because I did previously try to control how long or when he played and, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I just observed and when I could drop it, drop, um, my fears, really, it's like, it's not just trying to push them down. It's like, you know what? I know I feel that, but I'm still going to see because he loves it so much. Let me try and figure out why. That was really the question. What is he getting out of this that makes it so incredibly interesting that he wants to do it this long and this often? Mm -hmm. And it was amazing, you know, after a month or so. And then I figured out ways once, once it's like, oh, wow, look at all this stuff. I got to the facilitator point, you know, where it's like, I want to help him as he's doing these things, right? So I'm looking up walkthroughs, maybe I'm reading them through as he's working through things, you know, and I got to the point where I saw it as this lovely and interesting tool because the skills, I could see the, the skills and the things that he was learning through using those tools were the same things that you know, my other kids were learning in other ways. It was, it was just another way to learn things. 
a way that um, was, he was very curious about, a way that engaged him and his personality and the things he liked. So it, it just, that is how I got rid of my fear about it was through um, information and not, you know, the conventional messages, but through my own experience, through seeing my kids and like I said, it was even pulling together um, what I saw from my kids that weren't gaming as well as my kid who was gaming because I could see them learning all the same kinds of things just with different tools. So that that was probably a long answer, but that's how I got there. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. And, uh, yeah, that really resonates with me. I mean, um, you know, I it, it's funny, somebody – Somebody a little while ago said to me, you know, hey, what have you tried to see, um, you know, what, what particularly um, from my son, um, have you tried to see what it's like if you, you take the iPad off him for a week? And I know, uh, you know, I, I was quite taken back and I said, I would never do that because um, it's his work, you know, mm-hmm. you know, this is, I mean, this is what, um, you know, some people find very difficult is to, to understand, you know, it's not, yeah, sure, it's play. But again, you know, as we know, um, you know, play, learning, it, it goes hand in hand. Um, and and for every, for every kind of fear that, I, you know, I I hear people say about technology, that, that you know, there's something really good about, about so the, you know, the, these tools as well. And as you said, there's so, it's, it's so, um, it, uh, different depending on what they're using this um and I, i'm always um amazed of what my children learn and um just by just by exploring um themselves you know on youtube and things you know it's kind of <laughs> it's great my my son will often come in and tell me stories about he's very interested in world war one and world war two <clears throat> and he'll come and you know, he came in, I just, I wasn't even out of bed. And he said, hey, mum, <clears throat> did you know that Hitler, Hitler nearly drowned when he was a child? And I was like, no. And he said, <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. And he said, so, he said, and now, and it, the man who saved him, you know, he was talking about how he wasn't sure now if he, you know, he how he felt about the fact that he did save him. And then we went into discussion about this moral dilemma. So if you knew that it was Hitler, um, a child would, when he was a child, and if you knew the future, what he's going to do, would you have saved him? And I said, and we were just talking about that, but how would you let a child drown? And so, it, it, you know, it sparks. So I find, yeah. I find it pretty amazing actually. And, and, and often they will come to me and tell me these fantastic things and it will spark off all these interesting um ideas and conversations um and i oh yeah and i and i feel you know for them <clears throat> i feel that that must be very empowering you know they're not <clears throat> they're not sort of sitting there waiting for it all to come from me or a teacher in school they're out there diving into it because of this technology that they have access to. Um, and, and they also can take it in so many different directions, you know, and, you know, um, my son's a big Minecraft fan <clears throat> and, um, you know, that, that goes on, goes off in all kinds of directions for him. Um, and you know, the, I, th- I find it really exciting, you know, a really exciting time. Um, uh, but I, you know, I also understand um, how parents feel because, you know, we are the first generation really of parents that have had children that have access to so many different yeah. screens and mm-hmm. we're kind of finding our way through it, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes I do wobble out and, and I think, Oh, you know, they've been on that, you know, for a long time. And I might go in and say, Hey, you know, it's been this many hours. Would you like to do something? And, and either they'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take a break now, or or they won't. Or they say, well, actually, I'm in the middle of, you know, I'm in the middle of building something and I really need to do it. So, you know, um, so I still have my wobbles about it. <laughs> but again, I think, um, you know, there's uh, Peter Gray, again, has, has written some really great articles dispelling the myths of particularly video games. 
um, which, you know, I think have a lot more layers to it in depth than a lot of people think. Well, yeah, I think that's the problem is when you stop at uh, screen time, you know, you what you imagine because you're just seeing a child looking at a screen and you see it a very you think it's a very passive activity. And as you said, look at all the conversations and ideas and thoughts and, and places that you go from that once you start um opening up and paying attention to that, really, you know, understanding that the spark came from something, you know, that they saw or, or did through that technology and, and notice all the different places that it takes them. But without that, yeah, you, you think it's just a passive thing. So, you know, that's the other, that the question, you know, cause I've had that too, you know, they've been doing that for hours, but you know, the same thing I would do, uh, when Lissy was up in her room reading books all day for hours, you know, I'd be, I'd take her food, I'd take her tea, mm-hmm. you know, I'd say, do you need anything else? I mean, that's when they're passionately just deeply engaged in something, whatever the activity is, you know, if it's been hours, you, you want to check in and see if, yes. if, are you all right? <laughs> Yeah. Are you still alive in there? Like, <laughs> but, but I also understand, you know, um, because as being as being a, I know, you know, I know as being an artist that you know I can bet uh, um, again I can get really engrossed in something, and you know, I, you know, my as you said, I, you know, when it's been hours, my concerns really are things like for my son is like, um, you know does your back ache? Like, are you changing positions? You know, <laughs> um, but I have to say, you know, when I'm working on an art piece, um, you know, I, 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 for example, I've been doing engraving and, you know, there's, my eyes are starting to go a bit funny and, and my, my hands aching, but I just so intensely want to finish this piece. Yeah, exactly. I to go actually through the pain to <laughs> just, you know, kind of suffer for your arts, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but the, it, it, I think sometimes it's the same for them. It's like, you know, Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I do feel that kind of that's more my role. I mean, you know, um, again, you know, I, particularly with my son, not so much with our daughter, <clears throat> but um, their son, you know, I kind of find ways to help him be, be okay, be quite, he- you know, healthy. Like, so as you said, you know, bring them food or water. <clears throat> and then also we are saying things like, you know, um, we got, got like a special bean bag so that his back would be supported and, you know, kind of, you know, t- talking about, you know, maybe taking a break where if he did feel like his eyes were getting tired. So just some kind of like, you know, just talking around it because he's, a, he's still not, he's only nine, you know, so, um, yeah, I think that's yeah. kind of, you know, that kind of satisfied my pet, you know, because otherwise, I do, you know, there's still, a, you know, there's still a part of me that's like, um, am I, am I, you know, is, is this okay? As, you know, as a parent, <laughs> I mean, you know, again, as I saying, being the first generation, yeah, all these things coming in, it's kind of, you know, we're kind of winging it a bit, you know. <laughs> But I thought it was a great parallel you made with the art. Like, I mean, I um, put in a couple extra hours of writing than normal last week, and Mm. my neck was stiff for four days. Like, I could (laughs) barely move my neck. But, you know, that was my choice to put in those couple extra hours. And next time, maybe I won't choose that. But, you know, maybe next time I will take extra care, you know, of my neck. That and and to go, oh, my gosh, the technology is killing our kids. That that's not the answer, even if your kid child has a sore back after or uh, or develops a headache. Those, you know, you don't put them in a position where you want that to happen. But if that happens, that's part of how we learn about things. Right. Yeah. 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 Those are experiences that we're going to like, Oh gee, that happened last time. And we're going to incorporate that next time we make those choices. So yeah, as much as we can help them notice those things and, and make the connection, you know, maybe your back sore because you were sitting in that, that position for a long time. Or mm-hmm. I know my neck was sore because I was looking down at the keyboard, yeah. you know, for, <laughs> for more time than I usually did or doing art, whatever, you know, to not judge the, whatever tool 
they were using or whatever activity per se they were doing, it was how um, that was in relation to, to them, you know, yeah, to, to their own body and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Very cool. And another, just one more point, if I can, sure. that is that, you know, also, you know, I also think that what I, well, what I have noticed is that, you know, children who um, are, can, can feel, can feel their parents' fear around it and disapproval, you know, because children mm-hmm. really sense their disapproval. And if they have um, very strict limits, what tends to happen is when they go over to a friend's house who who has, you know, more freedom, is that child just wants to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. I find that with, you know, many things, like the screen time, sugar, that child's often just asking to, um, you know, constantly to do that thing that they're, that they're not allowed to do at home. And, um, you know, and, and I think that is the issue as well, because if we, if we kind of make something wrong and make it taboo, it, it almost becomes, I think it's a really natural human instinct actually to want to explore it even more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, as you said, um, the, the problem with that is then that the, 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 the as human beings, we don't get to learn um, how, you know, kind of how to self-regulate in a way, because it's almost, you know, it's like binge eating or something, you know, and it's, it's kind of, you know, they, this thing has been, they've been not allowed to have this thing. And then suddenly, you know, there's somewhere where they can, and then, you know, or they, you know, go down to maybe even grandma and granddad's house who are fine with that. And, and then that's all that the child wants to do because they want to explore this very thing that to them is really exciting. Um, but they, then they have to fit it all into that time because they, you know, they know that's the very limited. And I think that's something that um, parents need to, you know, have awareness of as well. Yeah. Because um, your fear, your control is, is adding stuff on top of their choices. Right. So, so yeah. Their their choices aren't their own, right? Their their choices. I'm at grandma's now, um, so I need this to be yes, 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 without consideration for uh, you know any of my other needs because this is an overriding one because of the artificial structure that's been framework that's been placed on me and my life, right? So yeah, they they have to take all that outside stuff into account, and and I mean. They're going to, right? As you said, it's human nature. You want to explore, uh, uh, you know, especially things that, especially things like technology and sugar, because they're now in a place where um, that fear, that control isn't there. And, Mm. you know, it's not like they're going to be a criminal for doing it, right? (laughs) So, (laughs) so, you know, there's something to it. It's okay. You know, people do do this. So I'm going to see, you know, the grass is always greener. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you recently published a post on your blog that was titled, I've had enough of justifying our unschooling life. (laughs) (laughs) I could just sense, sense what was behind that one. (laughs) Um, you also mentioned this idea in your book too, in a chapter dealing, uh, with other people's negative reactions. I was just wondering if you could share some tips for dealing with those moments. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it depends on the situation. <clears throat> and it depends on who you're talking to. I think maybe <clears throat> the way that you might talk to, uh, you know, somebody at the grocery store um, is different as you than you might talk to a grandparent. Um, <clears throat> but my my um, I think what I've come to to realize, or through <laughs> um, wise or not, I don't know, but. <laughs> I think it, or it was survival. Maybe it's a survival mechanism. Is to say, you know, for, for sort of when you're out and about, actually, is to say as little as possible. Now, I know some homeschoolers and schoolers go, no, 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 this is your chance to promote, you know, unschooling and all that. And, 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 but I'm, I'm more of a why stick your hand in the fire kind of person, mm-hmm. and, um, and I, I just think, you know. <laughs> You don't have time to go into everything at the grocery store to get your, you know, the checkout <clears throat> or wherever, you know. Um, and in it, 
I'd say just you say, yeah, you know, they, you know, the kind of, cause we, you know, we've, we've got things like, oh, no school today. Or, um, is it, I don't know if you have these in the U S but <clears throat> they're called insect days here where, you know, the teachers go in and the children don't. And yep. yeah. So, yep. Oh, I didn't know it was an insect day today. And, <laughs> and, then, and then, oh yeah, yeah. I had I had that a lot. Yeah, yeah. when the kids yeah. were younger too. So now my guys actually go. They go. Oh, we. They say it now. Going. Oh, I, I, now I just keep quiet. You know, I just don't say anything. And then one of the children might say, "Oh, we're home educated." And they go, "Oh," and you know, you'll either get the reaction, "Oh, right," and that's it because I'm not. I'm not engaging. I'm not. I'm just packing the yeah. shopping. You know, that's not what I want to get into. Um, or I have had, you know, them go, <laughs> which I find like, what? But um, it's like, oh, oh, uh, so, oh, right. So um, do you do exams then? <laughs> you know, and yeah. that's, I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, like, and, and I, I have to go, oh, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're fine. You know, it, you know, it's all fine. I just kind of try, I try and just say something, you know, it's all fine, you know, it's all fine. Well, bye then, thank you, you know, and that's good. Go, or, or, you know, or even I've said to say to people, oh, are, are you, you know, are you interested in homeschooling? You know, I can give you some links and you could look at just, you know, and the, but the big thing is not to go into justifying or explaining or defending yourself. And, um, and you can tell when I, because I've also had, people and and we've been out and about and they are genuinely interested in how we learn and you can tell from the tone of voice the question whether it's going to be loaded and judgmental or if it's someone yeah. truly interested and that's great and you know I've chatted to people you know and it you know that's that's wonderful and and that's out and about um but you know with relatives I know it can be a lot harder and it always comes from their fear um and their their you know concern a lot of the times they're concerned for, for for the for your children um but again you know i i have this thing of you know i don't think it's healthy for us as parents or your children to be hanging around with someone who's going to be constantly negative um about your life choices because in the end they are you know they are your life choice choices so you know, I think we have to look after ourselves. Um, and, and, you know, we can be compassionate for other people, but, you know, compassionate for ourselves and, and for our children. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Uh, I actually have a couple of blog posts that blog posts that I wrote about um, with uh, families about uh, ways that I would, uh, you know, set, try to set family uh, gatherings up you know, for success, but, you know, without letting any of that, uh, negative stuff in and, and the things that I used to do about that. So uh, with the holidays coming up, I'll link to those in the show notes as well. But I, I loved your point about the, the grocery stores, you know, that's such a typical example and that you can really tell the difference when someone's interested. Like I've spent a half an hour standing in a grocery store aisle answering questions, yeah. right? Because I just, somebody that I knew in passing and they're like, oh, hey, you homeschooled and, and they were curious. And so I've had conversations at the dojo. I've had conversations in grocery stores, you know, all over the place. But then there's, you know, just the typical checkout kind of conversations or the dentist or mm -hmm. the doctors, you know, stuff like that. And, and um, my, my fun thing is, is just, especially because so often they're like, yes, no, like, you, do you have to test, you know, and stuff like that. So like you said, not getting pulled into justifying or, or anything, I would just say, nope, you know, nope, or yep, they don't go to school. Yep, mm -hmm. yep it's legal, you know, because <laughs> I get asked that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just with just with a big smile and confident yes or no. Mm -hmm. And then if they want to, if they have more questions, you know, and by then I mostly paid. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and sometimes my kids weren't interested in answering. So I would just um, give the quick we're home. They're homeschooled. They don't go to school. And, and you know, that was it. And if they had little questions, just, yep, nope. And and on we went because, yeah. you know what, I, I'm not. They're just trying to make conversation. Right. I'm not there to 
convince them I'm not trying to go out and around evangelizing homeschooling (laughs) or unschooling, right? Everybody can make their own choices. But you're also, if they're curious enough to at least have asked the question, with the yes and the no, you're giving them little tidbits of information. And if they're curious, like you said, they'll, they can uh, ask more and find out more, you know, later. They can search it. They can whatever next time I come through because you know you start to recognize the checkout people (laughs) they may ask more like I've had that at the dojo you know at one time yes no and then sometimes later uh somebody will come up and say hey I heard you guys do this and then have more questions you know Mm. so so yeah I really don't um it's 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 that feeling if you get caught up feeling like you need to justify Yes. Right. Yeah. That is when it feels like a negative experience and something that you um, want to avoid. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that I, for me, that was the biggest mind shift. As you said, you know, I've had enough of justifying our life. No, I, I'm going to just I will just answer your question. Yes, no, because that's usually what it is. And, and we'll move on. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, and and it's and you know actually it's no one's business. It's you know yeah. it's your family, and that, that's what we've got to remember. And sometimes I think, God, these people are so rude. I mean, you know, would 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 you ask? You know, uh, would you say ask about you know. Um, you know, how me and my husband deal with our finances. I mean, it's just bizarre. <laughs> Do we go out on date night? I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, it's kind of, and that's what we've got to remember. It's a child thing, right? Because they'll, they'll ask kids, you know, what grade are you in? Who's your favorite teacher? What yeah. you, how are you doing in math? You that, know. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's right. And I, you know, one, I, I mean, one answer I do have to the, the old socialization question. God, that question here. And I just, <laughs> you just reminded me it was a dentist and it really surprised yep. me, you know, and actually it's orthodontist. And uh, she's, oh, right. So you're homeschooled. And then, and she went, so, so do you have friends? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god really I'm gonna have to answer this and I just went and I did go you know there's over four I said oh yeah I said there's over 400 families homeschooling in Somerset Somerset's our county in Somerset Mm -hmm. alone and their eyes nearly pop out their heads you see and that's all you need to (laughs) see they go really you go yeah you know, so it's, you know, that that's the only time actually I, I'll, I'll say that. Otherwise, like you said, to say yes or no. And, but I know it's it is more difficult with family members. And, and um, I try to kind of um, I try to be gentle, you know, and 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 just understand where they're coming from and maybe repeat that question back to them. Um, and, and sometimes I, you know, I, I agree. Like I know I had one family member saying, well, you know, if they don't go to school, they, you know, what, what if they don't get a job and, and then, you know, what this happens and all that. And I, and I might say, yeah, you know, that, that's quite a scary thought, isn't it? I mean, what, you know, what if they don't get a job? Me, you know, that, you know, yeah, to think like that is quite, do you see what I mean? So it's kind of, yeah. but, but not, but so you're not justifying, you're kind of passing the question back. Um, and, you know, and also I think, I think sometimes people just want to be heard, you know, and mm-hmm. they just want to say, they're just like, they've, especially with family, because they, you know, usually family c- care a lot about each other and, <clears throat> they just want to be heard mm-hmm. and you know yeah it's something that um I did a lot before like when they were younger and when we were um getting ready for family gatherings like that especially like around the holidays you know I would um try to set our visits up for success in that you know I would bring things that that the kids enjoyed to do and I would do these things with them and we'd invite you know if we maybe we brought games and we'd invite other people to play other family members to play so that you were setting up an environment where they could connect with the kids and see that they were okay Mm. you know what I mean um so that they could have convert you're you're um setting up an environment uh where they could actually have conversations with the kids that were not about, you know, school or education, because everybody is so set to say, you know, 
house school because that's a kid's mm-hmm. job, right? In quotes again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to set up other activities that they could do together and see, oh, look, you know, they can talk. They can have conversations yeah. about about their interests and things. That's uh, what that's one thing I do too. I go up to um, you know my sisters in law, whoever, and just say, you know, uh, what are you, what are you interested in? What have you been doing lately? You know, what what are your hobbies? And they so often they'd be like, oh, I don't really have any, mm-hmm. you know. And, and that's another eye opening thing for them because they would realize that, you know, they're just kind of stuck in that work slash school for kids mindset. And then they would see our kids having fun with, you know, whether it was games that they brought and, or whether it was toys or, or board games or cards or whatever, seeing them doing things and being active, um, just like not not physically active because you're in somebody's house, but have things that they were doing and focused on and enjoying. And I would make a point of expressing my enjoyment, pleasure, whether I was doing it with them or or just saying, hey, isn't that cool? You know, so just kind of giving them a bit of a glimpse into our lives, you know, so it, right back to that. You know, this isn't a deficit. This is yeah. what we do instead, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and I'm just thinking as you talk about how, yeah, um, also you know a lot of uh, unschooled children, oh, because of the because of the way they are um, having a relationship with their parents and maybe other adults around them. When what I notice when we go to any sort of family gatherings or anywhere, any if friends, is that my children will listen to adult conversation. And they will join in, mm-hmm. and 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 my nine year old son, um, in his in his mind, he has as much right to be part of the conversation as his uncle or or his auntie or things. And so, so so they may talk about something about a new car they've got, and um, he'll just chirp up and say. Hey, you know, I I bought I um I made a car in in, in Minecraft and um this car hit just like this and then I could uh, so you see he'll just and you know sometimes yeah. just, the adults are quite taken back by this nine year old is you know s- speaking up um, yep. <laughs> and going well hey I'm part of this conversation so I'm listening to you I'm here I'm present and I have something to add t- to your conversation you know yeah. And it, and it's and it and it's great. I I love that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, no. I it's just just these little glimpses for them, right? Of of seeing um seeing the kids in action. Yes, yeah. Cuz cuz they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And so, All right. Yes, yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you have something to oh, add? Well, I was just going to say very very knowledgeable about their own interests, you know, so they yeah. the confidence um when they do speak, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's so great um, to to focus, to try and help their interests shine when you're together because, I mean, it's just amazing what they know about what they're interested in, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's not that, like, all of a sudden they don't know the curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing other things. They're not just sitting in the corner of the basement, right? <laughs> yeah. they, here's a little bit of all the really cool stuff that they do know and that they enjoy and they excel at. And look, they can talk about it with you for ages if if you're open to that, right? That's the piece. Okay, our last question. Um, what has surprised you most about your unschooling journey so far? I love this question. This is a really good question. <laughs> I had to think about this. I I. Th- I yeah I thought about this uh, I think it relates to what we were just talking about actually I I'm just amazed how much um our children are learning what considering they've been left alone and, and <laughs> you know it and it, it I find it astounding and I and you know I see it in other children as well um that they find how if they are left alone that they they are uh, how resourceful they are and how fa- fascinated they are in the world and their curiosity. I mean, it it's just never ending. Um, 
and that they can go out there themselves and, you know, they can find what, what they want, you know, again, because of technology, that's, that's really helpful, but it never stops. It's kind of from constantly from one thing to the next thing. It just all rolls into one. And, you know, I, I find, I find that really fantastic to stand and watch that unfold. I know it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's, it's amazing when you're not on top of them controlling. I think I, it, uh, Carlo Ricci calls, he uses the phrase, children are capable, mm-hmm. you know, and we don't see that until we give them the space to be capable, to do things, right? To make some choices and to actually do things. And it is just brilliantly amazing how capable they really are when, when they're given the opportunity, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so, so much for taking the time to speak with me, Luminara. <laughs> oh, I've enjoyed it so much. Thank you so much, Pam. Oh, yes. It's been lovely, lovely. We had a, a nice long conversation there. <laughs> and uh, before we go, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Uh, my blog, uh, it's www.livingtheeducationrevolution.co.uk. Is the best place, and also um, the Living the Education Revolution Facebook page. Excellent. I will have links to both those places in the show notes. Thank you. And th- thanks again. Have a great night. Yeah, you're in the evening. Yeah, have a great. <laughs> have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes at livingjoyfully.ca forward slash podcast. While you're there, be sure to check out the first book in my Living Joyfully with Unschooling series, Free to Learn, Five Ideas for a Joyful Unschooling Life. In it, I share the five paradigm-changing ideas that most help me better understand unschooling. Reviewers have said, a quick read, but packed with ideas that challenge the dominant paradigm of our failing approach to learning, this little gem makes an excellent argument for unschooling. And... I was rather doubtful about this book, as I had never heard of the author, but after reading it, I wish that I had read it years ago. I hope you find it helpful too. Free to Learn has also been translated into French and Spanish. Until next time, have fun living and learning with your family.